This is the Celtic Cross, which the family established in commemoration of those who lost their lives in the boating tragedy of Easter 1895. Five years ago, the research team consisted of four people, three of us retired, and inspired by the publication in 2002 of a book on the maritime archaeology of Strangford Loch, we were surveying the, the foreshore, looking for man-made structures and surveying and measuring them. That brought us to the foreshore at Mount Stewart, where uh, we were looking at the remnants of the jetty that the Londonderrys had for uh, their pleasure boating. But we noticed the uh, Memorial Cross, which was commemorating the loss of eight lives uh, in the boating disaster in 1895. So we started looking into that, and we quickly realized that this was a very significant event. It was and is the largest single loss of life in any boating accident in Strangford Loch. The occasion that which permitted the servants to go for an afternoon out and have that time off was Theresa's invitation to open the Belfast Arts and Industrial Exhibition in Belfast. So all of this was a grand day out for the family with responsibilities and yet back here there was just a brief respite for staff. This is the jetty on the sea plantation where the picnic party set out for their adventure and excursion. The Jetty is just really some foundation stones now, but originally it had a wooden superstructure. You can see some of the remains of the posts along the back of it. And at this jetty, the boat and the boatmen would have been waiting uh, for the party to walk down from Mount Stewart House. The boat set out in a southerly direction, down towards Kirkcubbon, crossed the loch to Bird Island, and then ultimately up the western shore, right out in the distance behind me, uh, finishing somewhere in the region of the He Island on the other side of the, of the loch. So when the boat disappeared, they were on their homeward journey. On the other side of the loch, they were almost within sight of home. But of course we know they never actually managed to make those last few miles. Joseph Grange was the house steward. He was the most senior member of staff to travel to Mount Stewart on that occasion. The Londonry's valet, William Rowe, was 32. Um, and we don't know an awful lot about him but he also had a responsible job and we do have, uh, where well, we have seen um, a copy of his notebook where he is obviously the um, right hand man for Lord Londonry in his everyday activities. Elizabeth Dougal worked her way up from the position of housemaid through various roles and prior to being employed by the, the Londonrys was uh, the housekeeper for the Duke of Athol in his residences at Blair Castle in Perthshire. William and Robert Hagen were the boatmen on the Mount Stewart on the day of the disaster. William Hagen was a very well-known fisherman and boatman from Kirkcubbon, and his son Robert accompanied him on the day. Eliza Taunt was the Londonry's head cook. She had been employed by Lord and Lady Londonry since they were married. Two of the people who lost their lives in the boating disaster were employees of the Earl of Enniskillen. Jane Cheshire, aged 20, was the lady's maid for Lady Kathleen Cole, Lord Enniskillen's daughter. The other employee from Florence Court who was lost in the disaster was William Start. He was the valet to the Earl of Enniskillen. One of the most exciting finds in our research project was a collection of some 900 glass plate negatives which are the property of the current Marquis of Londonderry, but very fortunately stored here at Mount Stewart. During conservation of those negatives, we've discovered pictures of the Mount Stewart boat taken in the early 1890s. Not only the boat, but with the boatman and the very recognisable figure of Teresa, the, the owner of the boat in the stern, actually sailing them on Strangford Loch uh, at the front of the house. Around about two or three years ago, the group expanded uh, to seven of us. We each provide different skills and interests to the, to the project. We have also had a lot of help from the staff at Mount Stewart um, and also from uh, divers who have been assisting us. During this research project, we've amassed a huge amount of information, but we've very little in the way of tangible artifacts. At the time of the disaster, it was reported in the hours and, and days after, the, after it 
that some debris had been washed up on the eastern shore of the loch. Included in that was uh, an ore. Very recently, after decades, the uh, ore was found in the rafters of a barn on the estate. We have learned so much about the lives and personalities of some of the people who were lost in the disaster. And we have unraveled some of the mystery. But we still have not worked out the cause or found the exact location of the loss of the boat. So I suppose we'll just have to keep on searching and researching.